Chapter 19, People Force Problems. Welcome to the penultimate chapter of MeSearch. You're now an expert on social contracts, nature, society, hedonism, Marxism, libertarianism, Darwinism, and utilitarianism. You can even discuss the Socratic method, stoicism, deism, atheism, determinism, free will, solipsism, and the many worlds theory. But while all that was excellent priming for your me-search, don't rest now because this chapter's topic is every armchair philosopher's favorite subject to misunderstand. Democracy. Yep, it's a philosophical fact that most people think they know exactly what democracy is when that's next to impossible since more than 2,234 descriptions of a democracy exist in the English language alone. Democracy is a lot like a family vacation. It sounds great in theory, but often leads to incredibly hostile feelings and resentment on all sides. So how did this misunderstanding begin? If you go back to its roots, democracy is a Greek word that combines the words people with force. And the first example of this people force was in the city-state of Athens in 508 BC. In this era, people who were classified as citizens were given the right to meet in assembly, argue about decisions, and then vote on them. But before you stand up and wave your flags, you should know that only one in four people at that time were considered citizens. This means 75% of this democracy was held at the mercy, or force, of the other 25%. And sadly, this is the template for every democracy since that time. To this day, the problem with democracy is the issue of who gets to vote and for what. For example, even though the term gerrymandering comes from America in 1812, ancient Romans used the same idea, with a different name, to screw over, uh, I mean maintain, certain results for their electorate, just like many countries today. Like it or not, unless you let everyone vote on everything and you don't let anyone veto any of those decisions, you are not living in a pure democracy. To be frank, our watered-down systems of people force probably need some more specific names. Look, I love to pat myself on the back as much as the next guy, but no democracy on record has given everyone an equal vote, which means when it comes to democracy, there's always a group that feels like a kid with their parents, no matter what their government tells them about freedom and voting. The next time you're celebrating your nation's independence, just remember that you're celebrating a nation and its version of democracy not democracy itself. Democracies are a lot like Fortune 500 companies, meaning they have an executive council that excels at marketing, branding, and sales. If this chapter damaged your love for democracy, let me ease your budding angst with a quote from the late, great Sir Winston Churchill. The best argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average voter. Comforting, right?